So 2025 friends is probably the best year to become a software engineer or I should say the best year for experienced software engineers at least. Uh, well, contrary to the popular opinion that AI will take our jobs, uh, I think it probably will. But if you are a software engineer only for the job, then maybe you are in it for all the wrong reason. When I became a software engineer or a programmer or when I started coding, uh, it was all for the fun of building something like building something really tangible. Well, not really, not really tangible software isn't so, uh, but all the services around it, uh, they, they are right. So folks like us, they always had time as an excuse to not build anything. Like, of course, we have our day job and we uh, build great softwares. But for for all our personal uh, or side hustles, for anything that we want to build outside uh, of our work, really for ourselves, or let's say there is a problem that we really want to solve, time was always this excuse and it's not there anymore because LLMs or AI, they have made time really cheap. Like, it's dirt cheap. And I think it's probably like the best to be in the industry right now. So to set the context right in this video, we're going to learn what is the most optimal way to use LLMs or AI to build the crazy software or that crazy app that you've been thinking for quite some time, but you were using time as an excuse. All right. So uh, I built this very nice, sweet little app. So this is the website fully generated with LLMs, uh, specifically Gemini. So the app is available on App Store and Play Store. Give it a try. This is one crazy app. Uh, a lot of people, when I talk to them, they get scared of th this entire premise uh, of having a lifetime timer on your home screen. But you know, that's the fun of it because the the purpose of this app is to, uh, to make sure that you are on your edge every day and you can really push uh, beyond what you can even think of. So this idea came from my wife. What happens if you, if you get to see like uh, an hourglass uh, on your home screen where that sand thing is really trickling down? Uh, well, I couldn't do that, but at least this timer is there. So in its current form, it's not very uh, functional in the sense that uh, it does give you a timer, but that's it. I wanted to build like a habits and goals feature where you can actually add goals and habits that you really want to chase. Uh, and the app will give you reminders and make sure that you really achieve uh, those goals. All right. I started with a very rough idea. Uh, I discussed with a friend of mine that what sort of goals uh, I really want to add to this app. And we came up with two kind of goals. One is uh, like a regular dated goal. Uh, let's say you want to buy a car or whatever where you uh, you want to be able to track progress until a specific date uh, then there are habit uh, based goals where you want to target that you uh, need to go to the gym every um, like every tuesday wednesday or like a certain number of days for a week or uh, or month i think these are two kind of goals which cover a good breadth of what we could think of now i worked with uh, gemini to come up with a PRD because I mean, that's how we actually build softwares, right? Uh, we should know what we actually want to build. So uh, I worked with Gemini to come up with uh, what the data layer or the SQL schema uh, could look like in terms of entities. We like when I say we, I mean uh, myself and uh, AI, uh, we came up with this dated goal, which has a few properties uh, and habit goals, which has similar properties, but a few different ones as well. Then we also talked about uh, how we will have breakdown of the screen and the component, uh, how the navigation will look like uh, and all different kinds of screens that we need and what sorts of features we need on those screens. And we also uh, talked about how we will integrate goals into the existing app flow that we have. Because in the home screen of the app right now, you just see a timer and it'll be really nice if we can show the goals that are closer to completion and a few more things around uh, b basic validation and the notification, the kind of notifications that we want to send to the user. Uh, and also like a setting screen that I uh, I love. Anyway, so we sketched out this PRD by working together. And then the next thing that I did was I asked Gemini to divide this into four phases of development. And it did the right thing. Since I lost the chat, I tried to do it again. I faded this PRD and also asked it to create a mental map. So if you see this mental map, this is pretty good. Try to come up with how the navigation will look like if we like take a step back and take a look at the app as a whole. Like the main app structure, it'll have uh, uh, three primary screens or three primary tabs. Uh, 
we'll have the goal screen which will have add goal flow um, and goal detail screen whenever like a particular goal is selected and i think this is good enough then i asked it to divide it into four phases and those phases were pretty good like for, for the first phase it focused just on the data layer uh like implementing the repository implementing the schema uh, the database uh, then the phase two was all about implementing the core ui and navigation primarily focusing on the add goal flow and uh it very nicely divided every phase into uh, like concrete tasks as well. Then phase three was all about home screen integration. Like the feature is uh, built and now how to integrate this feature with the home screen of the app. And then finally the notifications and the polishing. I was able to implement the phase one uh, completely. And if we try to take a look at the code, it is really amazing. Like it, the first thing it did is uh, it added the SQL schema for uh, for this ghost thing I, I ran into a very small problem where the boolean was not getting resolved and it probably didn't know that we can use import statements so for at least for this particular problem i had to google uh, it's surprising i didn't do it anyway apart from that particular small uh, hiccup everything else was pretty smooth so let's take a look at the interface uh, for the repository very straightforward uh, where you can get all the dated flows uh, you can get a particular dated flow you can insert a new dated flow and the regular data access object that I would have come up with if I was doing all of this manually. Uh, implementation was also pretty straightforward. So there was one design decision uh, that we traded on whether to use uh, Room or whether to use SQL Delight. So this is a Kotlin multi-platform app. The problem is that if you use Room, we'll miss out on a few core features that the Room provides, uh, which defeats the purpose. And that's the reason we, uh, we went ahead with the SQL Delight. So the data layer were, was all complete. But since I didn't have the UI, I wanted to make sure that the data layer is actually working. So what I did is I asked it to write a few unit tests. Yeah, so the unit tests were very simple. Uh, insert a few goals and then try to get them back and see whether they are working fine or not. While this is fine, but it still doesn't test the real world uh, because it is only testing the repository and not really the fact that the database is uh, set up correctly. And for that, I wrote a quick or I asked LLM to wrote a quick integration test. Now it starts the app and within the app process, uh, it, or I should say instrumented process, it inserts a new goal and then tries to re uh, retrieve the goal. And this makes sure that the entire integration of database is actually working as intended. Mind blown. And I think uh, it was maybe uh, I was at the 30th or the 40th minute mark uh, when I was doing all of this. Usually all of these things, they, they usually take a day or maybe two days, uh, provided I'm working for whatever, eight, nine hours. Uh, so the phase one was all complete with this uh, and with, with these basic tests and was working fine. And then over to phase two. Actually, let me show you how phase two is looking right now. I'm almost there. So when I tap this button, you see this very nice screen that opens up. Uh, there is one card that says dated goal and uh, habit. Let's say I select dated goal. Not sure if you notice this progress bar uh, proceeded ahead and there was this gradient at the uh, in, in the background which moved to, to the left. Uh, let's say my goal is uh, be the CEO. Next. And all of this is LLM generated. It's it's amazing, like uh, all of this was in the PRD and it did the right thing. I did ask it to use this bottom sheet and use the existing uh, timer date selector that I already have uh, in the app. It was not very modular and as part of that, it also made it modular so that it can also be used for time and not just date. Uh, and all of this is working like so nicely. For the monthly reminders, uh, uh, the user can actually set what date they actually want that uh, reminder notification. So I save the goal, the goal is present here. Um, and one screen is still pending, which is the uh, like the goal details. And even this screen needs a little, a little more work. It's not looking the way it should ideally. If we quickly try to take a look at the code that it has generated, it is really amazing. Yeah, things start from the add goal flow screen. Yeah, this is the screen that opens up when we tap on plus. And now this screen further needs to have three screens. And uh, this is what uh, is represented by these uh, three objects here. Now, why the screen is needed is because I, I need the common UI elements, which are common to all the three screens, primarily the, the progress bar and the gradient, which is, uh, which is in the background. And uh, you see it also, it's also passing the progress as in, uh, I think it represents the, which screen is being shown right now, one, two or three, and based on the progress, it moves the, 
it moves the gradient because if I move to the next screen, the gradient is moved to the left uh, on the left side. So it's like already doing the right thing, uh, which even I would have done. Then this is the gold type selection screen, which is the first one. Then this is the second one. This is the third one. And it's really nice because I think even during the iteration, I was particular about like making sure that this uses just one view model. So the way I want to architect was uh, view model. It's a waste of time to have a view model for even very small section of the screen. And usually for a good defined flow, it's uh, it's generally good to have a view model. I'm calling it view model. It could be a controller or whatever. Basically isolating the entire uh, app logic uh, into one class so that it it's it gets easy to reason about uh, and you can think of it like a reactive uh, store as well because it has a state and all the methods just keep on changing the state and keep on emitting a new state which the ui is listening to like all the three screens are eventually listening or the four because we have a container as well all the four screens are listening to this state and um, uh, and populating this state and by the way, traditionally, if I were to do it with this level of fidelity, I'm pretty sure it will take at least six, seven days or maybe three, four days if I'm well accustomed with Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, and I could do this like within within a day, which means that it's making me fast by at least what 5x or 6x. And, and it's just the starting. I don't know what, what happens uh, from this point onwards. So folks, uh, all the software engineers out there, it's time to wake up. And this is the time to be in the industry. This is the time to build. This is the time to do something. So wake up <laughs> and go build software. Build the like whatever crazy software that you have been thinking of and which you have been holding off uh, because, because of time. And now the time is really cheap by a factor of uh, uh, 1 by 5 at least. Uh, all right, folks, I think that was it. And let me know if you guys have a nice software or an app idea. Uh, I would love to embark upon it if I connect with it. Well, till then, go play with LLMs and uh, do stuff. This is your host, GB, signing off, and I will see you in the next one.